17. It could be, of course, that the new media will simply create new oligarchs, less interested in good journalism, which costs money, than in the financial power the platforms and advertising give them. Let's be very, very wary of billionaire techies thinking that algorithms and other people's blogs are all that you need for good journalism. Let's see how Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, handles the Washington Post, which he's recently bought. Let's see if the sense develops that the Facebook Twitter revolution is really not about more democratic media, but about the flotation billions. Let's keep an eye on so-called demand media, otherwise known as advertorials, gaining hold as they've started to in the States. And let's be very wary as well of the danger of a new rich-poor divide which further weakens journalism as a pillar of democracy. On the one side, free news in short blasts. On the other, proper journalism reserved for those willing to pay for it. But for now, let's be optimistic and try to ensure that social media becomes a counterweight to oligarchism, not a modern, sexier version. At the other end of the income scale from Zuckerberg and company, campaigns like Everyday Sexism and No More Page 3 have been interesting additions to the media scene. Page 3's centrality to the success of The Sun reflected cultural wins at the time. But culture changes. And the campaign for its removal uses social and conventional media to engage directly with the paper about its own content, and in so doing is actually part of the journalistic process. The thing to be clear about is that journalism isn't dying. It's just that technological advance means that the print platform is gradually, very gradually, disappearing. But print journalism didn't die when radio came along, it adapted. Radio didn't die when TV came along, it adapted. The web is forcing all forms of media and politics to adapt. More optimism. The new delivery systems can be more democratic, even if at times they seem anarchic, and they offer the opportunity to pioneer a journalism less influenced by corporate interests. Rightly, the media, big media corporations, for their own survival, are doing all that they can to build online audiences for their journalistic content. But previously tame audiences are much harder to corral. <clears throat> Political and business elites will always fight hard for themselves, but there is at least a chance that in the next generation, media ownership and control will be, to coin a new labour phrase, for the many, not the few. The new technologies empower a growing army of citizen journalists, bloggers, readers and commenters to construct a more pluralistic debate. A monopolistic industrial model of journalism, where the agenda was set by journalist elites, is shifting towards a network model based on profit and non-profit, individual and organised journalistic practice. As the Murdoch Dacre generation fades away, that is grounds for optimism, but this generation, the generation of students here, has to make it happen.